Hello, everybody. So consistent, high quality content delivers sales results. Thanks ever so much for coming to listen to our talk. This is Bryony Thomas. She is author and founder of the Watertight Marketing Movement. And she was the marketing strategist on the case study for Accenture that we're going to present today. Thank you, Sonia. Sonia Jefferson is the author of Valuable Content Marketing. And for Accenture that we're going to do today, her company, Valuable Content, absolutely keeps that content engine running, which we know can be very hard. As she said, consistent content delivers sales results. The case study that we're going to talk you through today is for a small business based in Gloucester. There are 13 of them. You find yourself today on the B2B trail, and this is the most business to business as B2B gets. They sell information security consulting to commercial businesses and government organizations. It is niche, it is jargon-tastic. <laughs> and what we found when we went into a centaur was a business that talked in acronyms and really was struggling to get leads um, from new areas rather than people that they already knew. What I'm going to walk you through is the sales process and how you map content to that sales process. Watertight marketing is about not wasting a penny of your marketing budget. And if you pour money into the top, you want to make sure that it comes out at the bottom. Part one of my book and on the postcard that you have there outlines the 13 touchpoint leaks. And the first step with a centaur was to do an audit. Dave James, MD, said, what we need, Bryony, is leads. And I said, no, what you need is a watertight process. We did an audit and we went through and we tightened up all 13 of the touchpoint leaks. But what we're going to go through today is the six areas that made a real difference to this business. The first area, which is number three on my list of 13, was no emotional connection. This is a complex sale. These are five and six figure deals. People working for two years or five years with a centaur. This is not an impulse purchase. They want to look in the whites of your eyes and know that the person who they're trusting with their business information is someone they're going to want to work with for two to five years. There, was no, there were no people, there was no humanity, and it was extremely important that we found a way of getting across and creating an emotional connection with this business. The next area that was an issue for a centaur is number four on my list, and that's no gateway. We're talking about five, six-figure deals here, and people don't just see it, buy it. They need stepping stones. And we worked hard to create a gateway into an ongoing relationship with a centaur by way of powerful and compelling content. Leak number five on my list of 13 is no critical approval. People think that information security is an IT issue. But when they turn around, it's the head of HR, it's the head of finance, it's the MD who needs to sign that off. And if those people don't say yes at the right moment, there's no point in having had that conversation at all. And we've worked hard with the content to make sure that anyone with a power of veto has something for them. The next one for a centaur to address was leak number seven. This is information overload. They were jumping in feet first into jargon-heavy, acronym-tastic copy that even the most hardened information security geeks would find really quite dull. So we worked hard to liven that up and make it something that you might want to read over a cup of tea. The next area of concern for a centaur was not being known for what you do. Leak number 12, what you do. Clarity in what they do. You looked at their content, you looked at their brochureware, and you would be forgiven for thinking that what these guys go in and do is sell you a box that encrypts your data or puts up a firewall. And that's not what they do. They become a strategic partner in your business. They sit down and they understand people and policies. So we worked hard to make sure that that was clear and always put the content in context of the strategic partnership that a center wants to build with their customers. And leak number 13, was no emotional impact. 
Information security doesn't seem like a problem because you think you have it covered. You have your firewall. You have your box in the server cupboard. And we needed to get something that grabbed people and made it look like a real issue for their business. And Sonia is now going to talk you through what we found and what we did. So this is their old site. This is what we came up against when we first started working with Accenture. And probably most of you will have seen sites like this in the past. This is a pretty standard B2B traditional website. It's a static site. There was no CMS system. So even if there was a spelling mistake, they wouldn't have been able to change it. You'll notice that there is content on this site, but it is 100% sales content. The only information you'll see there is what we do type information. Now, MD Dave James shuddered when anybody said that they'd visited this site, and possibly some of you can see why from this. Um, it's a site that basically makes you want to leave and encourages you to do so. So you'll see the um, logos on the top right. That's prime real estate, isn't it, for a website? Those all, if you click on those, you'll click straight off to another person's site. They're encouraging to leave. There's no engagement there to make you want to stay. So this is a site designed for Bounce, and we had to solve that for them. And this is the new site. Now, this site took eight months to build. It's a WordPress site. And which has been tailored specifically for them, not templated, but tailored. The site is rich with content. And with all the businesses we work for, we try and aim for what we call the 80-20 rule of thumb. So 80% valuable content, 20% promotion. And this is a massive difference from how the site was before. So if you have a look on the homepage there, you'll see all sorts of different types of content, 80% of which is valuable, engaging, helpful, educational content that Dave's company is prepared to give away generously for free. So even on the home page, this has turned from a brochure, basically, an online static brochure, into a rich content resource hub, if you like, for his customers. He's catering here, not just for people who are way down the sale looking to choose a centre against somebody else. He's catering for people who don't know about them and who want to build the trust that Brian he talked of through the content that they share on that site. So you'll see blogs and you'll see tweets and you'll see deeper content that we'll go through in a minute too. But this is a, this is a website with some emotion in it and with engaging content that people actually want to get into and want to get to grips with and share. Um, is that as a WordPress site, we certainly could have got it up in shorter time than eight months. Sonia's company is adept at getting great sites up quickly, but this is a small business with no marketing expertise in-house. They're running their business, they're billing their time. So we wanted to show you a case study that's based in reality, that shows you that actually you have to work hard to get the foundations in place on which to put together sales driving content. And let's have a look again at those leaks and how we addressed them. The first was no emotional connection. Any sign of binary code and data and photos of boxes and computers was banned. Uh, we worked on a brand that really helped them to put across that what they do here is help you to find the bigger picture. The next issue was leak four, no gateway. One of the things that we designed that then led on to a paid gateway product and audit was a free online risk review where people could put in and some answers, some questions, and get a quick heads up as to where their biggest information risks were. This is a key piece of content on the site that gives tailored response and a little view of what it might be like to be one of a Centaur's clients. Number five was no critical approval. In the resource area on the Accenture website, anyone who could say no to a sale will find a paper, a guide, something of real value that's useful to them. Number seven was no invitation information. As Sonia has said, we've taken this from 100% sales to 10%, 20% sales. 80% of the content here invites you and gives you something free, compelling, useful, and relevant. They're committed to 
a weekly blog, daily Twitter, monthly e-newsletter. And this is what invites people to stay in touch. The next area was not being known for what you do. We worked hard on this strap line. It says, secure your information, strengthen your business. So it tells people what they do and why they do it. It puts it in a positive context. It makes it clear the benefit that someone will get from that business. And all of the content that the valuable content team help Dave and his team deliver puts things in that strategic context. And the next area was no emotional impact. Sonia's going to talk about this one in a little more detail, but it was really compelling. And what it did was humanize and show any business, any of you in the room, could be an information saboteur. And no encryption in the world will stop you from leaving your laptop down the pub when you're drunk. So we went through, we fixed those leaks. But let's show you some of the specific content and how that worked. So here are two key pieces of content that you'll find on the website. Um, these, we, when we're working with businesses, we make a distinction between what we call stock content and flow content. I've taken this from the world of economics. So flow content is ephemeral, if you like. It has a shorter shelf life. These are your blogs, your tweets that go out fairly regularly and turn over quite quickly over time. But on a website too, you need some really key core pieces of content, your stock content. And this is what we've created the, with some of these examples here. So you'll see the board's guide to information risk. No jargon, guaranteed. This is a genuinely valuable guide for any board um, who are interested in this field. And it speaks to each member of the board, to the finance director, to the marketing director, to the MD. There's different messages for each of them in this. Um, it's been a fantastic tool to open doors as part of the sales process. So not only is it drawing people into the site, it's also used as an outbound tool not brochures, but this guide as a way of getting sales conversations with the people that they want to do business with. So this is this mix of inbound and outbound that we're seeing at play here. The other piece of content Bryony touched on is a bit of research that we undertook. So we surveyed a thousand people around the UK and asked them about their attitudes to the information they were tasked with as part of their job. Now we found some fairly startling statistics on this one. 50%, more than half actually of the employees that we interviewed would sabotage their company by letting out that information if pushed. I can see a few wry smiles around. I think it's probably none of you in this room, but 50% of those thousand people would do that. Now this brings the point home that information security is not just an IT issue. This is a very human thing. So the piece of content helped to warm up commercial companies who they were looking to do business with, that this is a much wider issue than they may purely consider at first. It's quite visual, this thing as well. We created an infographic as part of the research, and this is something that's hugely popular and was very widely shared on, it, on social media when we put the infographic up on the blog. So it has wider implications too. But I want to take you quickly through the most recent campaign that we've helped them create. Now, I'll tell you a bit of a story about this one, and it may ring true in some of the companies that you work for, but... This is a consultancy, and they have 13 consultants. A couple were coming onto the bench. They didn't have enough work to do. So we got together, Bryony, myself, and Dave, and we put our heads together about how we could get them more work quickly. We looked at the issues that were going on in the market and the skills that they had, and we found that the government G Cloud, the government cloud, is new within that particular market, and a centre have all the skills to help people get accreditation for that cloud. So there's the need. Now, there's two ways we could have gone about getting sales for this side. We could have done the traditional way, which would be to buy a list, 3,000 people. We could have hired a telemarketing agency to go after that list or spammed out you know, 3,000 emails, cold emails straight out to that list. We took a different approach and we took a content-led approach. So the first thing we did was to create a really valuable guide for people going into this market. Again, it's a hugely jargon-laden process accreditation. So we stripped all that away and produced a four or five page document that told them everything they needed to know about accreditation. It's hugely valuable. And we did two things, and this is this inbound and outbound mix again. We put it up on the website, as you'd expect. We took some of the content and we repurposed that into four or five blog posts that we shared over the month. This started in December, this campaign. 
and we've got sales pages of information on the site so we've got what a centaur can do within this particular market so there's information up on the site there now that in itself has brought them business putting that out there um, and optimizing it properly they are now second and third. This is a 13-person company. They're second and third. If you typed in G Cloud accreditation, I'm not sure any of you would, but if you did, um, they, they would come up either second and third in the Google rankings, and they're getting found. And when people come into the site and they read the blogs and they read the guides, they get calls. So they've got six calls over the last couple of months from the website that way. And we did more than that. Dave, who's the MD, took it upon himself to phone up some of the people on his list. The list was 451 people long. He put some time into calling 25 of those people to start off with and offering them this piece of content, offering them the valuable guide to G Cloud accreditation. I'll give you some statistics. Well, of those 25 calls, 17 people requested the guide. He's a good, he's a good guy, this one. He, he presented it properly. Um, and of those 17 people, he got eight meetings so far. And of those eight meetings, he's won two significant pieces of business. And this is just in a couple of months. So if you look at the statistics there, that's 25 people is all he's called. And so far, he's got two major pieces of business out of this. And that's because it was led by some really useful content. This sort of stuff flies under people's anti-marketing radar, if you like. It doesn't get blanked out because it's useful to them. So it's not the same as sending a brochure. This type of content delivers sales results. And you can see with the benefits, you know, that as soon as we put the new website up, there's an immediate increase, significant increase in leads. They're getting found not just for G Cloud, but for other niche terms on the web, and it's drawing in leads that way. They've brought in many bits of business through that side over the last three months. It is pulling it in, but there's other benefits too. You know, because of the content, PR is so much easier to get. So they've had the specialist press, they've had you know, government organisations and the BBC contacting them and asking them to contribute to articles and research and guides and programmes. You know, it spreads the awareness further. It's wider than that too. And again, we had a chat with Dave before we came on and we asked him if there were any other benefits from the approach, this content-led approach that we've worked at here. And there, there are many. Um, one, he's finally clear on what they do. That sounds simple, but I know you will empathize with this. It's very difficult, isn't it? You go to a networking event, you write a sales proposal, you come to something like this, somebody asks you what you do. Because of the research that we undertook, the branding exercise, asking their clients for feedback, and putting those messages into action, they have a very clear idea of what they do. And they actually do marketing. This is 13 consultants who do not see normally marketing as part of their job but we've made it a habit you know through the tweeting that they do daily through the blog articles that his whole team contribute to and through I'll keep going and through um, the newsletter they produce it's part of their day job and it makes them better at what they do the more you write the more you share it deepens the expertise and that has that has benefit I think what is really useful just to map out is the rough steps in the sales process and the sort of content you need. You've seen a number of different tools and techniques put up for a centaur, but if I were to summarize, I would say at awareness, you're looking for those snappy one-liners that grab attention. So that's high on emotion, low on logic, fewer than 100 characters so that it can be retweeted. Interest, helpful stuff that they can digest in the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of tea. No longer. A bit shorter, maybe. The next level, and this is where um, we go on to Sonia's stock content, it's evidence, it's endorsements, it's proof. And this is where people often miss out the next steps when it comes to content. You need to give them a trial, make it easy to get a sense of being your customer come up with quizzes, audits, um, online tools and calculators that form part of your content mix and give someone a taste of your business. At adoption, often, if all things are logically equal, they will go with what feels right. And it is so important for gaining that sale that they like you, that they trust you. And that comes with banter. And social media has given back to you the ability to socialize with your prospects and clients. 
And for loyalty, you need to earn the right to keep that conversation going, earn the right to drop into their inbox, earn the right to get clicked on in their Twitter stream. And you do that by consistently delivering high quality content. So if we were thinking about that flow information, this is what keeps the bounce going. This is what keeps them aware of you. When the need kicks on, you go on to the stock content, the papers, the proof, the deeper level content. And then when they've bought from you, you need to keep it going with that friendly banter. This is the mix that you need to keep that long sales process going. It's not to say you can't speed it up. We've just shown you how a centaur have landed two six-figure deals in two months when previously it was taking six months. You would be looking at these flow items being daily and weekly, the deeper items, the 20-minute pieces, the webinars, you might refresh these on a monthly or a quarterly basis, and then ongoing communications to build a relationship. So let's just recap. To fix leak three, no emotional connection, we humanized the business. We took them out of the server cupboard. For the gateway, we put on a, an online risk review that gave a flavor of their business. Five, no critical approval. We worked out everyone who could say no, and we designed a piece of content for them. Seven, invitation information, weekly blog, daily tweets, a commitment to doing it. Twelve, not being known for what you do. Everything we write is in a strategic content, context. Everything we talk about is strengthening your business. And 13, if any of you can firewall against an annoyed, hacked off employee sabotaging your business, I'd like to know about it. Because that's what we help people to understand and see. And that is what's delivered sales results for a centaur. So that's personality, a product ladder, equipping the internal salesperson, creating invitation information, setting the context of what you do, and slapping them in the face with a problem they cannot ignore. If you make a commitment to delivering consistent, high quality content, you will deliver sales results. <laughs>